You may be seated. Welcome this morning. Welcome to our online family. What a great way to start church today, right? We're talking about what matters the most, what is meaningful. And, and in the series, The Blessings of Christmas, each week we've emphasized a blessing. It, it's important to be able to see the blessings of God in the midst of some of your greatest challenges. As a matter of fact, if you look throughout Scripture, what is consistent about the work of God is that the greatest miracles of God happen in the most difficult moments of our lives. That is Scripture over and over again. And this week, as you prepare, as we prepare for Christmas, yes, it looks different this year than perhaps it ever has before. There is a reality that on both sides of the coin, there are those who will celebrate and draw near to family, and then there's those who will be alone this year, who will be separated. And if we focus on the things that we do not have, we will get lost and we will miss what we do have. And the blessing of Christmas reminds us that the most meaningful gifts are not going to be the ones that are under your tree this year. The most meaningful gifts are going to be the gifts that come from your heart. And what you just realized a moment ago was that there was a home, a family, a husband and a wife who turned toward Jesus intentionally, who laid down their pride, who humbled themselves before Christ and before one another. And they have turned a corner to go all in on Christ and on their home. And by doing so, they are experiencing one of the greatest gifts this year that you couldn't wrap and package or Amazon and ship. They're experiencing one of the greatest life-changing gifts that anyone could ever receive. What a great reminder about meaningful gifts. And today, I, I want to go to one verse in Luke chapter 2. One verse. Uh, we read the Christmas story this time. We read it in church. We hear it in church. Uh, there are moments in the Christmas story that we each relate to. But there is one verse every year that stands out to me above every other verse. I mean, the, the story is full of glory and, and hallelujah. The story is, is full of miracle that the virgin would give birth to the Savior. The, the story is fascinating with angels and, and, and yet also conflict both in the world and then having to bear a child in a manger to be able to bring birth to life in a stall. There's so much within the Christmas story. But I, I believe when we think about meaningful gifts, as you think about this week, whether you're alone or together, whether it looks the same or it looks different, as you slow down your heart and you think about meaningful gifts, what really matters to you and to those you love, I believe that what Mary shows us helps us grasp what truly matters, what is truly meaningful. And it's one verse, it's Luke chapter 2, verse 19. It's very simple, and, and I read it with you and to you today. It says this, Mary treasured all these things. Mary treasured all these things, and she pondered them in her heart. Mary, she treasured up, she held on to, she found meaning, watch this, in all of it. All of it. And therefore, because she saw the hand of God and the meaning in all of it, the good, the bad, the hard, the difficult, the glorious moment of birth, and Jesus, she treasured all of it, and she kept it in her heart. Today, as we think about gifts this week, Christmas this week, I want to take you one step deeper into the most meaningful gifts that you have, that you did not lose, and that you can celebrate this year to move you forward into the next. So, Father, I thank you for your sons and your daughters, all of us who our hearts are attentive and open right now, but only by your Spirit. 
Let us not get lost in the news of today, but truly be humbled to receive from your spirit into our lives what is life-changing and meaningful. And I pray this for every man, woman, boy, and girl today. In the name of the Savior who was born, Jesus. Amen. Here's the life lesson today. What we treasure in our hearts, that is the treasure that matters the most. What we treasure in our hearts, that is the treasure that matters the most. And what you see Mary in this moment, at the, at the conclusion of this Christmas story that we read, that I encourage you to make a tradition around your home and with those you love, don't lose the meaning of why we capture the Christmas season to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Don't lose that. But also, in not losing that, focus on what's really happening and what really matters the most in your heart. You see, gifts that come from the heart, those are the gifts that show, that reveal who, what we love. Everything that comes from the heart, it has no law placed over it. It is given and received in love. And Mary in this moment shows us the most tender, meaningful, deep moment of love between a mother and a child. But it's not just any mother and it's not just any child. This is Mary giving birth to the Son of God who would be the Savior for not only all of humanity who would receive Him by faith, but Mary knew something even in this moment that many of us will overlook. That the baby that she would give birth to would also be the Savior of her soul. That he would also be the one that would rescue her life from the debt of sin that we all owe. And in this moment, she ponders all of it. I mean, to be conceived within her of the Holy Spirit, a child... And yet to remain a virgin, as the scriptures say, that in and of itself is scandalous to our modern minds. We cannot scientifically wrap ourselves around that one. And so many people will doubt. Many people will throw shade. Many people will use even this moment as a reason to not have faith. But not Mary. Not Mary, for she knew the truth of what God had done in her life. And that is the reality for all of us. What God has done in your heart is the story that no one can take away from you. What God does in your life is the story that no one can question. It's your story. It's your moment. It's what God does in you. And that is salvation at its core. It is the rescuing of our dark souls by a beautiful Savior born to rescue even us from our sins. And that's what Christmas is all about. When I think about meaningful gifts, Jesus is the gift. There is no fixing. There is no going all in. There is no changing until we get it right with Christ. And he wasn't born a king in a palace. Oh, what a great message for all of us today. He was born a savior among shepherds. He was born poor in a stall. He was a savior for everyone. He was a savior for me, for you, for us. And this moment reveals Mary's heart because as she treasures in her heart and she ponders in her heart, what is going on, that tells me that the greatest things that change lives are what happen within our hearts. The greatest gifts, the gifts that matter the most are the gifts that are within our hearts. The heart is where we express love. The heart is where we harbor what we desire the most. The heart is where meaning of life comes from. And what we treasure there the seen and the unseen. What we treasure there is the gift that matters the most. 
Here are some of the gifts that I believe for you and I this Christmas as we think about meaningful gifts that we can learn from this holy moment between Mary and Jesus and where she's pondering all of it, the whole experience in her heart. The first gift, this is an unseen gift. This is a gift that I encourage you to embrace in the next few days as you prepare for your Christmas celebration, as you look for meaning in the midst of perhaps one of the most difficult and challenging moments of your life. The first gift that is present in this moment is the mystery of childlike faith. The mystery of childlike faith. The whole Christmas story of Jesus reveals the power of the mystery of childlike faith. Now, if you put this story into our context, or quite, quite frankly, into Joseph's context, Mary's husband, the story doesn't make sense. Even Joseph himself struggled with the reality that he had to work through. And it took a word from God to push him through that to do the right thing. Even in the midst of that and the complicated nature of what things seemed. What you have is a woman, Mary, a man, Joseph, and a childlike faith to trust God beyond what they understood or what they knew. That same childlike faith is required today for your salvation and for mine. I mean, that's what keeps many people from experiencing the meaningful gift of God's salvation is that they overcomplicate it. They want to figure it out. They want to solve it. They feel like they do deserve it or don't deserve it or are too prideful to ask and humble themselves for a salvation from a Savior other than themselves. Many of us, we want to save ourselves. We want to prove it. We want to earn it. We think we deserve it. Uh, we want to cover over. We want to outsmart, outthink God, outwork God, outlook God. Where is God? And that's what a lot of people do. But in childlike faith, God shows up every time. And God showed up in this moment for Mary and Joseph. He didn't leave them alone to figure this out and to navigate something difficult. No, by the Holy Spirit, he validated a miracle. And this was a miracle. And Mary carried that miracle for nine months. She carried that thought of what was happening within her. And Joseph, he stood beside her for nine months in that process. Why? Why would anyone do that? Because they believed God. They believed God. The miracle of childlike faith. Childlike faith is like your children, perhaps, or your grandchildren, or as you've watched children before, open presents. I'm not talking about your teenagers or your preteen students who, who think they deserve everything, right? I'm talking about the ones where the magic of Christmas still exists. And the twinkle in the eye on that early morning of December 25th, it happens. And they, they go to a tree and they see things that perhaps were not there the night before. And they wonder at the, the mystery of the moment of what's happening and what do they want to do. They want to wake you up because you're tired and you're sleeping. And they don't want to miss a moment and they want to open the first gift. And listen, before you get hard in your life and in your heart and before you harden your things and before you say, well, this exists and this doesn't exist or this was that and, and you move on. Listen, have you seen the love in the eyes of the child? Because there's something about that day in a year, every year. The mystery of a childlike moment. It will grip all of us. And that's what faith is. The mystery of childlike faith, of knowing that a Savior was born to rescue you. God's most meaningful gift was given to you as a child. It doesn't matter today 
if you're four or if you're in your 40s and you think you have it all figured out, the way to salvation is to receive God's gift of Jesus with childlike faith. The child, they accept, they receive, they love, they're overjoyed, they don't complicate, they understand what a gift is. And what's fascinating is it doesn't matter how inexpensive the gift is or how expensive the gift is. To a child, they don't even know. It's the miracle of the gift. Jesus is that gift. And to receive him and experience him in a very meaningful way requires the mystery of childlike faith. And in this moment, as Mary ponders what has happening, what has happened and what is happening, she is a reflection of childlike faith. And that's what's required to experience the most meaningful gifts of life. There's a second thing that stands out. The simplicity of a salvation undeserved. One of the most meaningful gifts that you can receive and experience this Christmas is the simplicity of a salvation undeserved. That is undeserved. Salvation and the gift of God is not complicated. The only people that make salvation complicated. It's us. We make it complicated. But God didn't complicate it. He sent a savior to earth. So that those who would express childlike faith. And receive Jesus as the gift to save their soul. That is the move that changes a life to show us God's desire is not to complicate our salvation. How do you know this? Well, what did Mary ponder? Well, there were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks in the fields by night. And suddenly, lo, behold them, there is an angel that shines gloriously, and and they are terribly frightened, right? And the angel says to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today, there has been born for you in the city of David a Savior. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in cloths. And lying in a manger. And suddenly amongst that one angel there was a multitude of the heavenly host singing and singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among people with whom God is pleased. Salvation is not complicated. Salvation is God sending to earth his son to save us. When we could not and do not and are not capable of saving ourselves. Not only in a spiritual, soulful way. Let's be honest for a moment. We can't even save our day-to-day lives. We need a savior for now and we need a savior forever. And it's not complicated. Jesus came as the greatest gift To save who we are. The simplicity of a salvation undeserved stands out because even Mary in this moment recognized that she was giving birth. And even the Bible tells us that she sang a song of worship to her child. Now, I understand, moms, that um, you love your children I understand that that moment is a unique and special bond that is developed between you and your children if you've ever been there. But you've never worshipped your kid. You've never given birth to a child that would save your soul. And Mary did. She in that moment recognizes and even in scripture gives us a reflection that she is receiving As she has with childlike faith been obedient to God, she is receiving a salvation that even she did not deserve. And the Bible is clear about that. The Bible doesn't mix messages over that. The Bible helps us understand that even this woman understood the significance 
of this child. And that's why we celebrate that fully around Christmas time. Because it is a simple, childlike salvation for all of us who do not deserve it. And yet, God gave it, and we receive it, and it changes everything. Jesus changes it all. And he is the gift. He is the one that stays with us when we feel abandoned. He is the one that stands with us when we feel isolated. He is the one that brings blessings when we feel like we are living under a curse. Jesus carries us and saves us from it all. That is a salvation that God gives through his son that we just don't deserve. And if you will embrace that, the mystery of childlike faith, and the reality that you have received a salvation that you don't have to deserve, that you can't earn, that you won't have to prove to God that you are on the right track. No, you have received Jesus, and it is the simplicity of a salvation received that is undeserved that will change your life, your home, your direction when you turn to Him. And that brings me to the third and the final thing. When I look at this moment between Mary and and Jesus and all that she treasured within her heart. You see, there's the mystery of a childlike faith, a meaningful gift, the simplicity of a salvation undeserved, a meaningful gift, and there is the love that brings forever to life. There is the love that brings forever to life. You have a moment of love reflected here as Mary ponders all these things as she looks upon the Savior that was born through her as a Savior for all of humanity and she has the divine privilege to give birth to this child. What an amazing person she must have been. And yet in the midst of that, there is a love that is greater than anything that you and I could just capture in this Christmas story. There is the love of God by sending a son from heaven his holy only begotten son from heaven to live among people like you and I to live in a world like the world that we live in to abandon heaven and to come to earth why because God actually loves you God actually loves you. And what makes Christmas truly meaningful, what will be one of the most meaningful moments for you, one of the most meaningful gifts that you can cherish and receive this Christmas, is that by sending Jesus, Jesus stepped out of forever for a moment, for a moment in time, for 30 something years, for a short period of time on earth, and he stepped out out of eternity, out of forever. And he stepped into this world to tell you and to tell me, God loves you. And to bring forever to life inside of who you are. Today, you don't just live a life that has a beginning and an end. No, if you are a follower of Jesus by childlike faith, receiving a salvation that is undeserved, then forever is locked up inside of you right now. And though you breathe and though you move and though you live and though you listen, there's something greater at work. And that is an eternal love of a God who cares that would send his son Jesus to reach into time and space with all of its fallenness, with all of its brokenness, with all of the challenges that you and I still face today. And he would say, remove all of that for a moment. Don't get lost in this. Don't get lost in that. For here I am. I am bringing love, the love of eternity to life inside of you. And all you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe. It's not complicated. It's childlike. And it unleashes the power of eternity in your heart and life today when you trust Christ. And that process then begins the unfolding of a better you, a new you, a new you created in the image of a perfect God who in his wonderful plan says, I love them. I love them. And yes, they are a messed up bunch. And yes, they do it their way. But it is the gift of love 
the most meaningful gift that ever will occur that we could ever receive. The gift of what Mary is pondering in her heart in this moment, it is that gift that will change your life. And so she pondered these things. She treasured it all in her heart. She knew that it is the treasures in our hearts that are the treasures that matter the most. And the love that was expressed in that moment between mother and child was a reflection of an eternal love that brings forever to life. God's plan was brought to life in Christ. God's plan was birthed to save you, to save me, to save us. That is the celebration and the meaningful moment. And it is that gift that today I encourage you. Wrap your heart around it. Let it captivate a very simple, mysterious moment within your soul with childlike faith, embracing the salvation of God through His Son, Jesus. Because love was born. Love came to life. And it is the most meaningful gift for you and I to treasure this year. Father, I thank you for your sons and your daughters. And I ask right now by your spirit, if any of them in their heart in this moment knows it is time with childlike faith to receive Jesus and the gift of salvation, that God from their heart right now, as they are real with you, Give them the faith to say yes, yes to Jesus.